Hi Chris here with the QBi9. So this is their flagship tablet. It has the Skylake Core M3 in it, 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD. Now I've had my one for approximately two weeks. I have been using it literally every single day, doing a lot of work on it. And in fact, at the moment, I'm writing up the full written review on the tablet itself. And I must say that it is performing really well. It's exceeding my expectations, really. Um, most of it is due to the fact because of this keyboard that it has. Now, me personally being a Surface Pro user for many years, I'm quite familiar with this style of keyboard, and I don't actually mind it. A lot of people don't like it because it lacks uh, a keyboard. It's not a fixed, sorry, it lacks a USB port, but it's not a fixed keyboard, so you can't freely move it as you could with the Transformer style. I don't mind it because it's got the kickstand on there, so I think it's all right. Now the keyboard itself, once I've been typing on it for a while after I adjusted to it, I find it's very good, good to type on. I'm not a, a speed typist or anything like that, but overall it works for me and I think it'll work for most people. It's a keyboard that has everything that you'd want on there as well. You have all the settings, print screen, you can disable the trackpad, and overall I do like it. The build of it is definitely premium and it's very close to the Type Cover 3 that came with the Surface Pro 3. In fact, I think this is made by the same ODM. The trackpad as well is very usable. One of the best ones I have used. It's very accurate, very responsive, and it does have the left and right mouse buttons and supports Windows 10 gestures too. If I put that side by side with my Surface Type Cover 4 here, you'll see that it is definitely larger than the one on the, on the reworked Type Cover 4. It's a very nice keyboard, this one. Um, and the typing experience, I'd say, is definitely a little better. But it's not far off on this either. The key style is different. You can see that the keys are slightly smaller on the Cube equivalent. And the layout is a little different because Microsoft pushed the keyboard right up to the edge of the screen here. So we do have a little more space. But overall, it's quite spacious and I am definitely enjoying it. Now the type cover keyboard can just be removed and clipped in and has two positions and you can simply just pull it out and clip it in just like the surface does. And if you have a look with the kickstand we have two positions. So this is the the last position we get which I use literally most of the time and then the second more upright position that I find is probably a little bit better when you're sitting in a chair and using the front-facing 2 megapixel webcam there. The webcam, by the way, is actually all right. It's not too bad for a Chinese tablet. 2 megapixels has a good frame rate and overall good for Skype use if you're in good lighting. If you're in lower lighting, it tends to look quite grainy. Now, the screen is not a retina panel. Okay, it's only got 188 ppi. It's a 1920 by 1200 screen, so it's not an award-winning display or resolution, but it works. It works. It's fine. I think most people will be happy with it. Um, if you're going to be looking at the screen really, really close, uh, you will see and notice the pixels because it's only 180 ppi, but I find it's, it's good. It works well, and if you're one of those people that are using older programs such as a Photoshop, CS6 or CS5 that has problems with scaling in Windows, you won't have any problems with this because of the lower resolution. And the touch response is good, the accuracy is really good, colors, viewing angles are good, but it does lack a little in brightness, which I find slightly annoying. But overall, this is Chrome here that I have at the moment. The performance of Chrome and the performance of the tablet is very good. Now this is the successor to the i7 stylus. A lot of people like that tablet. That was the, f the first Core M uh, tablet to come out from uh, Cube. It's a good tablet, but I do think this is definitely a, a, a proper successor to that model. More practical machine, more usable as, as well. And it does perform very quick. Out of the box, their performance is a little limited because Cube have toned down the power limits by one watt on the CPU. Now I made a, a thermal mod to mine, put a little bit of copper in there, and then I increased the power limit 
And what that does essentially is give me more power and it's made this unit more powerful than the Surface Pro M3. We can actually play Grand Theft Auto 5 with, I will, I'll go, it wouldn't go as far as playable frame rates, but it is playable. I mean, it gets around 30 to 24 frames per second, and you could get away with playing a game on it. And that's, I think, astonishing, really. That is really something, because this is a fanless tablet. It only has a 4.5 watt CPU in there, and to be able to play a demanding game like that, um, it's only 800 times 600 resolution, I think, is quite something. So all in all, I am definitely happy with this unit. We do have things like the uh, USB Type-C port. So I'm considering getting myself a, a Type-C dock. So you can get a dock that you can plug into that, and you have display out charging and access to some USB 3 ports. Audio quality as well is good. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack produces loud and clear audio. I think most people will be very happy with it. Speakers as well, they're not the loudest, but they are definitely louder than most tablets and do have a tiny hint of bass to them. And the overall build quality isn't bad. We get the metal housing. Okay, it's a little bit plasticky around the top, and if I zoom in here, you'll see that the fit and finish isn't perfect. There's a little bit of a gap here, you can see. But I mean, this is a, a machine that's aimed at, I think, a Surface Pro for consumer, but it's half the price of one, so all in okay. The biggest complaint though is the micro SD card slot here. That is quite problematic. It had trouble accessing my larger memory cards on the first BIOS that it shipped with, and then later on when I updated, uh, flashed a newer BIOS, it will read my cards, but it will often, it's hard to describe, time out or go to sleep and that requires me to reboot the tablet before I can access my 64 gigabyte uh, SanDisk micro SD card so quite an, an, an annoyance that one there with that but overall I can definitely recommend this this tablet and as I mentioned it is a a step up I believe from your normal tablets you see and definitely a step up from the smaller i7 stylus but the i7 stylus is quite a good buy as well because if you think that's around $285, it's a lot cheaper, but you get some good performance. And of course, this is lacking stylus support, which is a disappointment. But all in all, yes, I can recommend this tablet. I'm thoroughly enjoying using it, and I think most people will be quite happy with the purchase. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully see you back in the channel. If you want more information on the thermal mod, have a look in the description. There is an article that links on just how to apply the copper heatsink and increase the power limits there. Hopefully see you back in the channel soon. Bye for now.